Jesus. 
Rakata Abasso, Kete, Nikita Abasso. We thank you for the new season. For the new season. I see like a new season. We're entering a new season. A new season. It's like something like being removed to enter the new season. The new season. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless and exalt your holy name. Oh, Rakatalaba. So thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. This is awesome. This morning we are this afternoon. Sorry. Uh, we need to address some uh, scriptures that are taking out of context. I mean, scriptures that are taken out of context, and people are using it to confuse brethren in the body of Christ. Many of these people that are using this scriptures are sons and many are also not sons, they are still gifts. People many times just uh, because they respect their fathers in the Lord so much and they believe that everything the father says are right. So because of that, hmm? everything that uh, your fathers in the Lord says is right. And because of that, they don't go back to the Bible to pray, to be able to divide the word of truth accurately. And so they believe that uh, as long as it comes from the fathers in the Lord, they have to accept it. Uh, 
But one thing people need to realize is that even most fathers, despite of what they've taught over the years, they will get to the level that they will be confused and they will go back to the Spirit of God. And at that time, what they've already said, I can call it a process to where uh, a journey towards Holy Spirit is pointing to them to understand at the time that they receive uh, that revelation that they pour out. Mm. So now, um, if you're kind of person that you've seen um, different kind of waters, you know that waters are pure than themselves. Um, maybe it doesn't apply in this kind of uh, white countries, but if you've been in Africa and you know that there are different kind of waters, uh, there are raining, uh, there are waters that people gather when rain is falling, they gather in the basket or in the bucket, sorry. And there are waters people go and fetch in the river. There are waters that you draw out from the well. And there are also some waters that you tap, you get from the borehole, as in you get it under the heart. That is the most purest water. Now, if you kind of person that you meditate and meditate and meditate and meditate, you get to the level that you meet some inspiration and you will think what you got in at that time is the most purest but because of your level of understanding in the scripture or in christ god will give you what you can take god will not never give you everything at once but because of that uh your level at that time especially when you're going to level like you begin to teach other people even at that your level you think that that thing, the revelation you gather at that time, is the most purest uh, revelation. But one thing about my own divine experience is that uh, when I get a particular revelation, um, I will ask questions before I teach others. Because I want to ask questions um, Oh, what do you mean by this? What is this? What is this? What is this? What, is, what are this? He will explain those things, and and um, most times, after he has explained those things, and I begin to use it, because I need to use before I can give out. He must have changed me, formed me before I can uh, give it out. Don't give things that are not you have not used to people. Praise the Lord. I mean spiritual things, I'm not saying you should uh, go and buy a phone, use it and give it to people. If they want, they can ask, but try and give new things to people. But what I'm trying to say is that the spiritual things, make sure the water that you've used, uh, that have changed you, praise the Lord. Water means the word of God. Use that have changed you, then you cannot release it. It has become part of you. It has become the water of living water I and mean, rivers. It has become life that you gather from the waters of the uh, rivers of the living water. You don't just draw rivers I and mean, waters and just pour it out. You have to draw it, use it. Uh, then, when your eyes of understanding has been opened to whatever you are gathering or you are meditating at that time, then you can now share it to people. Don't share what you have not used. Praise the Lord. Now. Uh, there are some scriptures that were used in the Bible that we need to understand properly. We need to very we need to sh uh, shift this water and uh, these scriptures. We need we don't need to just pick it uh, and just uh, uh, just uh, share it to people. You need to use these uh, 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 letters. And you need to convert these letters to spirit. And the ending of a water and letters and spirit is the life. Because man, uh, God wants man to become life in Christ. 
not just to become, even becoming a spirit is not the last journey, it's to become the life. That's why Jesus said, I am the life. I am the life of, I am, I am the light of this world. And he, says, he also said, I am the way, the truth and the life to God. Praise the Lord. So, you don't just pick what uh, letters and begin to just justice with this. And another thing is that when you pick letters, you have to understand terms. And apart from understanding terms, you have to understand tones. And apart from understanding tones, then you have to understand where this verse was coming from. You have to understand where the verse was coming from. What is it that God is trying to say in this verse? You don't just pick it at the at the middle part and begin to uh, bring out doctrines from them. You need to understand each word that I use in a verse. Praise the Lord. You need to understand each word that I use. And you have to read it according to the tones. And by the time you read according to tones, no way the scripture is coming from, no way it's going, then you can go in scripture in you can go and ask questions from the spirit of God. What do you mean? What are you trying to say here? And Holy Spirit we open scriptures for you. That means we will teach you all things. And and the other thing is that uh um he said he will also teach you what is yet to come. At that time you have to understand that he was addressing his disciples. At that time they could not take everything, especially experiential knowledge. They have not worked in God experientially. They were just receiving the word. And that's why Jesus said, I will not call you my servant. I will call you friend because you have received. Receiving is one. Now, uh, comprehending or understanding what you've received is another thing. You can receive light and it stays in you, but you don't use the light. If you don't use the light, then it, is, it remains in you. It stays with you. Praise the Lord. Until you use it, praise the Lord, that it will now convert your soul. You can have light that stays in you, but it doesn't convert your soul. Praise the Lord. It, when, when, the, when the light has converted your soul, that is when he has uh, renewed you. That is, that is another understanding of what to be born again. See, you can be born again in Christ, but you still need to be born again in Christ. Hallelujah. Um, there are so many scriptures who will be working on in this teaching. But today I'm not going to pick every scriptures. I'm going to pick just maybe one and expand it with other scriptures. But I will call the title uh, Addressing Some Contextual Scriptures. In the Bible, what I mean is that you have to address scriptures that people are taking out of context mm -hmm. and using it to to, to uh, teach people thinking they are opening their eyes of understanding, but not only that they are even confusing more people. Let me tell you, people that are still coming up in Christ will take it, it will be a light for them. But people that are already in Christ that have journeyed to a particular level, they will see it and check it and know that what you're saying. Or how you are relating it, what you are relating to are not accurate. Okay, um, um let's pick uh here's one uh people are really working on this morning. Let me just see. first Corinthians one first Corinthians one thirteen one First Corinthians six. First Corinthians six seventeen. This particular verse has cost a lot of Yes. This, these scriptures have caused a lot of damages in the body of Christ. But he that is strong and 
is one spirit. Now, number one, it says, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But number one, it's true, but the challenge is that we have to go back and read where the scriptures was coming from. Mm -hmm. Because with these scriptures, people say, you are Christ. With this scripture, people start saying, you are holy and spirit. You are holy spirit. With these scriptures, people say, people are saying that, uh, they are saying the hanging or the processing, especially to new believers, new people that are just receiving, are just coming to the kingdom of life. So let's read it from, let me say from verse, uh, verse 6. If we are to read from verse 1, the uh, Apostle Paul was addressing people that take a uh, case a case among the brethren to the courts. I mean, cases that are supposed to be addressed within the brethren and check it and, you know, put it, I mean, I mean, to, to, I won't say to put a blame, I would say to address it and to let people to understand their levels and see how they can bring them to Christ. But, uh, um, they, People now took these uh, uh, cases to the court that uh, they are the people that are already in the court are unbelievers, so they will just be laughing at them. Okay, let's just read from verse one. Who does? He said, "Dear any of you, uh, okay, if any of you has a dispute with another, do you dare to take it before the ungodly for judgment?" Um, okay. Yet any of you having a matter against another, go to court before the injustice, and not before the saints. Can you see? Uh, so can you see? I'm reading two versions together. Okay. So can I? Which one should I put? KJV. KJV. Okay. Dear any of you having a matter against another, go to law before the injustice. And not before the saints. These are matters that are supposed to, you know, you're supposed to treat it or treat them among the saints. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels how much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgment of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are at least, who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brothers, go out to law with God. And that before the unbelievers, you can see people go to court, the brother will take uh, matters of another brother to court in front of unbelievers, people that don't know Christ. Now, now therefore, there is utterly a fault among you because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourself to be defrauded? Nay, Ye do wrong and defraud, and that ye and that ye brethren. Ah, I mean, I don't like it. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but not be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with my kind, nor thieves, nor conversions. No drunkard, no revelers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. Some of you. So, uh, please let me continue this with KJV. Uh, okay, let me start now from verse 7. The fact that you have lawsuits among you means you have been completely defeated already. 
Why not rather be wrong? Why not rather be cheated? Instead, you yourself cheat and do wrong. And you do this to your brothers and sisters. Or do you know that the that wrong, wrongdoers will not be in the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexual moral, nor idolaters or adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkard, nor slanderers, nor swindlers, we inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were. But you were washed. You were satisfied. Sanctified. You were justi justified in the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, and by the Spirit of our God. I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be master by anything. You say food for the stomach, uh, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord, for by his power, God raised the Lord from the dead. And he will raise us also. You can see we have to read our Bible with tombs. He said, now, let's, let's start, let me start my thing from here. Um... Verse 14, by his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us, read it with stones, he will raise, he will raise us also, please can you give me a penny, and he will raise us also, do you not know that your body are members of Christ himself, is a question, do you not know that your body your body a uh, member uh, of Christ himself shall has take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute never it was Paul that was addressing do you not know that he who is unite himself with a prostitute is one with her in her body for it is said the two will become one flesh but whoever is united with the Lord is one in the spirit. But whoever, that is what that verse is saying. He said, whoever among you, whoever, he didn't just say that uh, uh, he who uh, joins, he said, whoever is according to uh, a choice. He didn't say that because, he didn't say that because you are in Christ, this is the scripture that people are now taking, because you are in Christ, that you are already one with is a is he say whoever initially he put a question now say whoever now is a journey whoever is not just like you just make a decision and you believe that your decision is 100 percent you make a decision to take a step of faith and be one together with the spirits hallelujah so but you can see where this verse was coming from he was addressing and he picked, like let's say, I said, I have the right to do anything you said. Well, not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything. But I will not be mastered by anything. You said food for the stomach and the stomach for food, God will destroy them both. Praise the Lord. And um, the body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body by the power by the by his power god raised the lord from the dead and he will raise us that is the first point i want us to pick, pick that up and he will raise us that is the that is the purpose and plan of god that is the assurance is given to us that he is going to raise us praise the lord because god raised jesus from the dead he is going to raise us also from the dead we die and we are in Christ. We are we still have uh, we still lost after the flesh. Praise the Lord. We are not one hundred percent a spirit being. It takes our soul 
to be converted until we can become a spirit being. We are not yet a spirit being in Christ. Hallelujah. The problem is that we just take every scripture and we just begin to do justice with it. We begin to bring out things that are not uh, important in the body of Christ. And we are now confusing, especially in my, my, my target are uh, people that are just coming up in Christ. People that they are still carnal in their mind. Praise the Lord. To be carnally minded is death. And to be spiritually minded in is life. It doesn't mean that these people are one of the Christians <laughs> mind the things of the spirit. They don't. And you can see that is how that was how all of us started from. When we came to Christ, it wasn't that the same day we came to Christ, then we begin to mind the things of the spirit. We begin to, we kept minding the things of the flesh. And God kept blessing us with those things. Because he knew where we were coming from. He can't just uh, say, no, I won't, because you're in Christ, I won't give you, uh, I, I won't answer all those prayers about things. He just wants you to know that those things that you were running after, when you were in the world, I have them and I can still give them to you. Hallelujah. I have them. I can give them to you. They, those things are the works of my hands. I have them. I'm the one who created all of them from the beginning. And the purpose is to give them to my children. Hallelujah. So God will not say because you are coming from the world and he's expecting you to be, be mindful of spiritual things. You, in those that are at that state, you cannot take spiritual things. You cannot take spiritual things. You can only take things that are carnal. And all of us, all of us, including me, all of us, that was how we started our journey from in Christ. We kept thinking of carnal things. And God, because it was God who created those things to showcase his kind of uh, uh, person as a father to us. Then he kept, uh, he kept he, without struggling, he kept giving us those things. He won't give us things of the spirit at that time. We will not take it. Hallelujah. So, now, he said, uh, by his power, God raised the Lord from the dead. And he will raise us. He will raise us. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So, now, verse 17 says, whoever is, okay, so, verse 17 says, whoever is united with his Lord is one with him whoever is united so number one you need to be united hallelujah so we can see this scripture it says whoever is united with the lord in with with the lord is one with him whoever so number one is whoever number two, two is Whoever is united, so you have to be united with him. You have to make a decision that okay, this is this journey of the spirit. I need to go through the path that will make me to become a spirit being. Hallelujah. So let's also pick this verse, uh, John. John Okay, yeah, God bless you. So now whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Whoever, God bless you. <laughs> whoever I have in mind to do because I don't know what it was. The two will become one flesh. Also Whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. It means that the two also will become one spirit. That is what that verse is saying. He now said, flee from sexual immorality. Let me tell you, anyone that is still uh, uh, doing sexual, uh, is still, um, how would I put it? Anyone that is still engaging himself in sexual activity outside marriage, Praise the Lord. You can't say this person has become one with the Lord in spirit. And if you know that it is true, please 
Say something. Become one in spirit and go back. Yeah, to those things. Mm, that was the question I asked. I want to look in that thing. Flee from sexual immorality and other sins. A person commits. Yes, commits are outside the body. Sorry, flee from sexual immorality or other sins. A person commits are outside the body, but whosoever, whoever sin sexually, but whoever sins sexually sins sins against their own body. So, and Bible says your body is the temple of God. Hallelujah! If your body is the temple of God, it means that according to uh uh, the way God look at us in Christ, He's trying to tell you that this is your body that you are still playing with flesh. I want to use this your body the way I made I made or I made this up. Yes, I formed or I made this body. My main purpose of making this body is to be a temple for me. Hallelujah. Is to be a temple for me. He said, Do you not know that your bodies are temples? He said, Do you not know? Do you not know? Do you not know? He didn't just say your body is a temple. He said, Do you not know that your body is because of uh, because you are still using your body to engage in the things of the flesh? And God wants to get your body back to himself. And it's happening to you, it's telling you, it's telling you, it's telling you, it's making you that your you that holds your body, it's telling you that this your body that you think is yours. I am the owner of this body, and I want to use this body as my temple where only spirits will dwell. You can see what he says as eh? he said, Whom you have received from God, you are not your own. You were born at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Honor God with your body. So, but as long as you are not uh, running away from sexual activities, I mean, act, act outside marriage that God ordained, let me tell you, God will not have the total, uh, uh, God will not, God will not, uh, be free to use your body that you think is yours. But this body that you think is yours is his. Most times I want you to understand that uh, uh, most, most of what we call her home, for people who say it's my life, I can do anything in my life with it. It's not your life. You are just giving that life to manage it. Just like what God told Adam, he said, uh, he said, uh, keep the garden. Keep the garden. I have given you this garden. But you have to keep this garden. You have to what? You have to... To dress and to keep. Yes, it's the second one I want to keep. You have to dress this garden and you have to keep this garden. You have to dress this garden and keep this garden. Hallelujah. So God is telling you that you have to keep your body that you think is yours. You have to, I gave it to you so that you can, it's your responsibility to keep this your body. Hallelujah. It is your responsibility to keep this body. Hallelujah. But don't always use, take verse 17 out of context and say, whoever is united with the Lord is one with him. Without even, under, without even reading it with the tones. Whoever is united. 
whoever is united. So if you you if okay, see what I'm about to say. He said, for it is said the two will become one flesh. Do you not know that he who is united himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? In body. For it is said the two will become one flesh. Hallelujah. The two will become one flesh. So, uh, let me tell you, it takes a spirit to enter the kingdom of God. So, don't say that because you're in Christ, you are engaging in uh, uh, some activities of the flesh. And now, you will inherit the kingdom of God. No. See, the fact that you are in Christ, you're already in heaven. No, no, no problem about that. But let me tell you the problem about many of us is that. The problem about many of us is that we were, we were running to make heaven. Now, that people now have received a revelation that, okay, heaven is not, uh, is nothing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Immediately you are in Christ, you are in heaven. Now, because of that, people don't want anything. Okay. Ah, okay, I'm in heaven. Because of I'm in Christ, no problem. So anything I do in heaven is, is right. Hallelujah. Uh, let's see this verse that I also want to John 3, 5, 6, 7. John 3, 5, 6. Just like John 3, 16 that people. So, so uh, there are two things in this space. So I will read from verse. Let me read from verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He's a ruler of the Jews. And he's a Pharisee. So it means that he's a, he's a teacher of the law and he's also a ruler. So he's not just a teacher, he's also a ruler. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, number one, let's, let's, uh, let's underline C. He cannot see the kingdom of God. He could even say unto him, How can a man be born when he is already old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, Very, very, I say unto you, Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. <laughs> so let's underline the word enter here. Yeah. Except a man Except a man So that's what the line man so. Except a man is Except a man is translated Into the kingdom of light That is what it means 
you are emulating John 3 5 3 sorry with Colossians 1 1 13 except a man be born again he cannot enter so born again means to be translated into the kingdom of light or the kingdom of the sun kingdom of sun is there kingdom of his son kingdom of his dear son praise God then verse 5 says very very I say unto you except a man being born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So God tried to uh, now explain uh, entrance, entrance from sea. Hallelujah. Now, another thing that people need to understand is that, like I said a lot of time, Entering or uh, being translated into the kingdom of light, then we be loved because we believe that no other thing should do again. Hallelujah. But he said, except a man uh, be born of water and of the spirit. Water, what is water? The word of God. Amen. And what is the spirit? Spirit means to be formed for service. To be formed of service. To be formed for service. So at new birth, you are not a spirit being. God cannot use a, someone who just uh, who, who is supposed to see the kingdom of God. Until you see the kingdom of God, and you uh, 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 and you receive the kingdom of God, that is where you can now enter. If I'm in front of my house and I'm seeing my house, I'm in front of my house and I'm just seeing my house. Does that mean that because I'm seeing my house, I'm already I'm already in the house? No. You must see, and you must see the beauty. You must see everything that wow, wow, this is wonderful, this is beautiful. This house, anyone that wants to buy a house anywhere, you go to the agencies and say you want to buy a house, they will show you your house in the picture. That is one kind of, that you kind of see the house. Praise the Lord. The next thing is that you won't just pay your money and say, ah, give me the key. The next thing is that you have to enter, you have to open the door for you and enter. So you can see the kingdom and not enter. So, number one, he's trying to explain born again. You know, God, Jesus, the way he explained things. You first explain like introduction. But when you know when you now want to know more, you will now explain more. It's just like you are digging or you are meditating. Like I said, you know, Zion, you meditate and God will give you some revelation in raw. You can't just say, okay, just carry this raw revelation without breaking it down. So God wants to know it, you really just want to receive it raw and be happy with it and say, glory be to God and run away. He wants to know that, do you still want to, what I have given you raw, do you still want to understand this thing? That was what happened with Jesus and Nicodemus. He said, unless man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Meaning that until you are translated into the kingdom of light, then you cannot see Christ. 
Hmm? That you are in Christ. Even in Christ. There is also Christ in Christ. There are levels. Praise the Lord. There are levels to understand Christ in the kingdom. Hallelujah. That we are in the image of God. That is number one. Now, the image must express God, even in that image. Praise the Lord. You can see that Adam was created in the, in, in the image of God, which are the visible part of the image of God in Genesis 2 is the Garden of Eden. So God placed him in the Garden. But when he got to the Garden, God commanded him to eat from the Tree of Life. Praise the Lord. That is it. So, there is a particular, when you get to a place now, hmm, you have to understand that your soul, there is the highest of your heart. There is an eating man here. If you don't relate or understand that there is another hidden man in yourself. Praise the Lord. You think this is who you are, 100%. Praise the Lord. So, this hidden man has highs. That's why God says, and I pray, uh, John, um, Paul, Ephesians 1, I pray that the highs of your understanding is not this one. This is another highs that must see and comprehend God. Because it is what you see that you can you try to want to know about. I see a phone now. <laughs> this is my phone. I'm seeing this phone. Now I have to understand this phone. Then I have to start present and trying to relate myself to with the phone, try to know what the phone is trying to say. So there's a there's a man within you, and this man has uh highs. The highs of your understanding may be open. So until you read your Bible and relate it, when you are reading your Bible, what are you trying to do? You are, you are relating with something, with someone within you. Or else, the, this man, the highs of this man within you will be closed. Have you ever seen somebody that are, some people that are blind, but they open their eyes, but they are not seeing anything, but they are blind, but their eyes are opened. It means that this is not the only height that you have. You still have one within. They are blind like this, but they are like this. But they are not seeing anything. They have to hold them. Praise the Lord. Because there is something wrong with what is controlling this physical eyes. Maybe in our mind or in our brain. So also we have a you can you can be reading your Bible, but <laughs> The highs of understanding within you, the highs of that mind within you, that highs is closed. Hallelujah. So, he said, when you get to the kingdom, when you, uh, when you, when you are born again, you have become born again in the kingdom of light. Then you have to see light. He said, until you become born again, no one can see the kingdom of God. So, in the kingdom of light, this is the kingdom of God in the kingdom of light. Or let me say, in the kingdom of the sun, this is the kingdom of God in the kingdom of the sun. So you have to get to the kingdom of the sun before you can see the kingdom of God. Now, when you begin to see the kingdom of God <laughs> in, the, in the kingdom of light or in the kingdom of the sun, then you must try to enter into the kingdom that you are seeing. And the only way to be to enter is is what? Is by uh is to be born of water and of the spirit. Is to be born of water and of the spirit. Number one, you want to become born again, uh, you must first what? You must first be translated. Number two, now when you become born again. And you are seeing the kingdom, you must also try to enter into the kingdom you are seeing. So don't just say because now you are in the kingdom of the sun, you are become born again. No. Your, your spirit, <laughs> hallelujah, 
Your spirit is uh, a new spirit. Is, uh, sorry, your heart, a new heart has been given to you. But the whole soul and the whole mind that you got, that was formed and was made in the world, were still there. They are still within you. Hallelujah. So it takes the world, the water and the spirit to enter. So when you become born again, you still have to become born again again in the kingdom of light or in the kingdom of the sun. So I would say this difference between the and the born. Hallelujah. So if you let this with the one we, were, we, read, we read initially. Okay, let me read after that. Uh, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. He said, Marvel not that I said unto you, ye must be born again. Hallelujah. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. So you were, you can be born again in the in the kingdom of light. But your your flesh is still intact, even in that kingdom. I don't even need to ask us if I'm right or not. You know. You know. Hallelujah. So that's why people are still, don't just pick a scripture and begin to use it to expand your own thing. Praise the Lord. When you pick that scripture, if that's the scripture that came to your mind at that time, number one, by the time you read the previous verses of that scripture, then you will know who brought that scripture in your mind. You know if it is the Spirit of God that brought the scripture, or it is not the Spirit of God that brought the scripture. So don't just say because you are joined, um, because we are, we, are, uh, we are joined with Christ, we are one spirit with Christ, without understanding where the scripture is coming from, and the tones as at which that scripture is being uh, as uh, expressed, praise the Lord, and relating that script other scriptures to judge that scripture that uh, was released to you at that time. To so know if this scripture is the right scripture to use or not the scripture or the right, not the right scripture to use, I'm telling you the facts. Many of us will be uh, running in hells, thinking we are hoping eyes of people. Uh, let's just. I, I believe we understand uh, this. Okay. Let me check the time. I want to see that time. Let me see if I can use five minutes to explain one more scripture. Is in. Call it a day. John 4 24. He says, God is God is spirit. Now, the problem we used to have here is that because God is spirit, we assume that man is spirit. A spirit is a spirit must be worshipped by worshippers. So spirit can be uh, uh, spirit is uh, a, spirit is a servant 
or one who we serve. So, if man is spirit, that man has become servants unto God that must be served. Because God is spirit. God is the one that must be served. And for you to say that man is spirit, even from birth, it means that that man has become spirit. He don't become spirit at birth. Because I remember how we, they used to say this thing, and I've heard it many and many times. See, when you are reading your Bible and you not got into level like you get confused. Sometimes you get confused. Instead of us to go and pray, we begin to hack fathers. And it's good to hack fathers because you don't know the level at which uh, the father you are asking the level of his own growth. Even there are some fathers that have grown up more than what the level uh, of how, I mean, the, their level, their revelation of this of the Christ that they've seen at that time. But they've not relate their new level now to 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 uh to uh to lay another layers into another phase into what they've already known. If the Bible says God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit you can see the tone they that must worship him that is the tone must worship him in spirit. It means that before you can worship, before you have, before you can you can get to the position of uh, uh, worshiping God, you must be a spirit being. Which means that these those they are not yet a spirit being. Those that must worship him. Those that must serve him. The word must worship means serve. Those that must serve him must be formed to be servants. They must become servants. Servants are those who are selfless. Servants are those who don't own anything. Those that must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Truth means knowledge. They must have comprehended the knowledge of God. Can now Christians don't have not comprehended the knowledge of God. They are not going to when their soul have been saved. Their soul and their mind has not been renewed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Sorry, we're just celebrating now. So, God is spirit and is worship us. Must worship Him. Stop. Stop that. Yeah. It's worshiper must worship Him in spirit and in truth. His worshippers must worship Him. So, before you can worship God, you must change face you must move from your position right now and walk after this what that means is that you must progress you must make sure you leave things of the flesh out of your sight out of your way out of you you must remove things that are not of God before you can get to the level of 
worshiping God. But the challenge you're having is that you just say, because God is spirit, man is spirit. Goat give back to goat, dog give back to God, and go, and dog, dogs, dogs give back to dogs, so God also give back to God. Yes, God give back to God, God. but it is not, uh, that giving back is not just born again. See, there's another born again that you came from one place to another. This is the general way of coming to, into the kingdom. But to now, there's another one born again that you will walk. You will change position from the day you were created as a new being in Christ. You will have to change form. You have to be reformed. Hallelujah. <laughs> you give back to a baby boy today now. Eh? And nothing has ever entered into the mind of this boy. Or nothing has ever entered into the soul of this boy. And... The boy just uh, is just as black as he is. See, he's 20 years, and you say you want to send him to go and deliver a message for you. He doesn't he won't understand what you're saying. You just be looking out like this. Hallelujah. Like I spoke on Twitter, I say that you get back to a baby boy and you leave the baby boy in one room, and this boy just grew up in one room for 20 years. Nothing has any time to his mind. Well, he will still be, be, be behaving like he was when he was one year old at 20. So, for that mini boy or baby girl to get to the level of, uh, of to respond to, to you uh, in a mature way, then the soul and the mind of this boy must have Layers must have believed on this soul and this mind. So, even uh, the, the, the day you give back to a baby boy, you know the baby boy was already in the womb. <laughs> so, the day you give back, he starts growing, growing, growing. So, it's just like the same way we were already in some, some way before God brought us into the kingdom of light. Now, when, before we can grow in the kingdom of life, we have to receive light. You don't just say, I don't want light. You have to receive it. When you receive it, then you have to use this light for personal consumption first. So this light must change you. Hallelujah. If you seek the face of God, then his face will shine. So one is to seek. Another thing is for the face to now shine upon you. You can see that I'm using two scriptures here. <laughs> I'm speaking, I'm teaching, I'm, what I just said, I have two scriptures. Praise the Lord. So now, you have to walk in the light. You have to receive light. Light means revelation of Christ. If I have, if let's assume I'm not married, and I'll let's assume, let, let me tell you the time I met my wife, and I just say, yeah, I love you, without knowing anything about her, I just love you, and I want to marry you, and the second day I get to, we went to the altar like that, without knowing my wife, she doesn't know anything about me, let me tell you, the third day will break, <laughs> I just love you, the girl say, oh, you don't even know anything about me, how can you just love me? I just love anything, everything about you is okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can, you can. When you get close out, when you get in, in something, you get engaged with somebody, you have to take time and understand. I understand. I understand a person. There are some things that you want to take. There are some things that you want to take. There are some things that you have to take. You have to take because you love the person. That thing will fight your will. But because you love the person, that's why Jesus said, if you love me, don't, don't just say you love me by your mouth, but when my love comes into your, your, that's your will, eh? <laughs> because you have to obey me, you have to do my will, if you love me, you have to do my will, you have to obey me, eh? so if you really love me, then you have to do what I say, you yourself, you don't know what you need to do, you don't know what you need to say, 
You don't know what you have to ask for. So you have to accept me. Don't just accept my appearance and hug me. Accept my person as my being. So when you accept me, I'm telling you, you, you sometimes you want to attack. You want to fight. Your will want to fight against my will. <laughs> but if you really love me, just accept me. Let me renew that in your will. So that you can, you know what to fight and what not to fight. Praise the Lord. Amen. So God is spirit. Also, you have to walk. You have to move to become spirit. And his worshippers must worship him. He's must. He's a must. It's a must that you, it, it is a must. You have to do it. So you have to understand uh, with the truth. You have to understand, or in truth, understand how to worship God. Not worship is not sound like uh, I surrender out to you. No, that is not what is called. That is slow songs. Christian slow songs. <laughs> Christian slow songs. That is not worship. So you don't think that like, uh, because you are now a choir master, you've rendered your body. You've not rendered your body. It is that is not it's not that you are available. That doesn't mean that you are available to come to church to quiet microphone out of no time. You just get some time to come to church. That is not what is called worship. For those are not worshippers. Your inner being, everything, your makeup from the world must give way. And the new knowledge of Christ must stay. As in you must not, not to stay, he must use it, he must become one part and parcel of your lifestyle must change. You personally must fight with your will that is going against the will of God. And the way to fight is not to fight like this. It's not it's not it's not that charm. And it's not kung fu. <laughs> the way to fight is to just be patient, subject yourself. It is going to be hard. You have to submit. You have to submit yourself. The only thing God is looking for from us is to change faces is submission. Let's call it a day. Let's, let's close today. Amen. Uh, Pastor Sophie, please. God bless you. You see. Next time, pick another verse next time. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. That was uh, wonderful. And uh, we thank God for all those teachers who are trying to um, call upon the body of Christ to make us to understand that. Yes, Jesus has done it all on the cross, but it doesn't mean that everything, you can do everything. You don't belong to yourself anymore. We need to be reminded that you don't belong to yourself anymore. The meaning of grace that Jesus brought to us is, does not mean that everything is permissible. You can do everything and it is okay and you've all, everything that was that was um, written is yours already. You need to work on it. You need to dig and understand the word of God, receive the revelation, receive the Zoe within the word. It's a process. Your life needs to change. You need to see a change. You cannot, you cannot come into the kingdom of God and then remain the same. It has to be a change. The things that you were doing, you don't do anymore. That it, to get to a point where those things cannot even come to your mind because you've gotten to another level. We need to understand that. We need to, we need to push ourselves. And because we, we, we tend to become too comfortable thinking that, oh, Jesus has done it all and... I can do everything, I can, I don't even need to, to study the Bible, understand the word of God and pray, understand and, and grow. 
and grow and grow and grow and grow. Oh, I'm already, I'm already spirit. I'm already receiving everything. I don't need to do everything. Not that you do with your own confidence, but you do it with the confidence that you have in Christ. Amen. So um, it's just great to um, to have uh, you know the word of God emphasizing on those things because um, you know some of us are getting it wrong, thinking that all has already been obtained. And uh, you don't need to do anything. God have a I saw I saw in some places where they say you are, you are Holy Spirit. You anybody can be Holy Spirit. You are Holy Spirit. And uh, I pray that we understand, we all understand that we need to work on ourselves and allow the Spirit of God give way completely so that we get to the place. Amen. Amen. Where we become completely spirit. You know when you become completely spirit, you don't get offended. Anything people say. <laughs> Unfortunately, this thing of uh, everything people say, you are they say you are some people get offended because they say you are black. I don't even understand this thing. Me, you tell me I'm black, I will be very happy because <laughs> Black skin is good. <laughs> I'm not saying other skins are not good, but um, you know, it's uh, I um, I thank God for if He had made me yellow, fine, but He chose that I came out as dark, so I'm happy with that. If it was something else, then fine, but to the point where people insult you, doesn't do anything to you. When you are fearful, you don't, you know, when people are fearful, you tend to lie. Even though you are fearful, you, you won't lie because you are spirit. You've left the things of this world. It doesn't matter to you because even though you are put in a corner where maybe you might not have food, you will manipulate something to try and get something. But when you get to that level, that's what, what, what it is. When you get to that level, all those things, we are all working. We are all in it. Amen. All those things, they don't matter to you. Well, well, well look at how she spoke to me. None of those things. You only speak when the Spirit of God tells you to speak. Get to a level when none of those things matter to you competition and all those things and he needs to go so where even you're a minister of God and, and you necessarily want all the time things to happen so that you your shoulders can can be up like oh yes this is what even as a minister of God when you get to that stage it doesn't matter to you let's go let's let things be released as God will None of those things. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's um Korabasi Ketarabasi Katarabaso Koto. You are the life in me. You are everything I am. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. We will stay with you for life. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, we will stay with you for life. You are the life in us, oh. you are everything we are. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, you are everything we are. You are the life in us, oh. You are everything we are. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, you are everything we are. You are the life in us all. You are everything we are. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. 
If that's you, just put your hand on that particular eye. The Lord is removing the darkness, the infirmity in that eye in the mighty name of Jesus. It was going to cost you a lot to resolve but the Lord is healing you today. 
I clearly see somebody with one eye on very, very damaged, very, very damaged. Go rabba sike taraba so the Lord is removing, is bringing out the, the infirmity in that eye in the mighty name of Jesus. He's doing it for his glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless and exalt your holy name. Let's do one more and then I'll close after that. Go rabba sika da.
and stretch it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You release the muscles. Take it away in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody watching us suffering from COVID. That's what I'm hearing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that the eternal life that is released. Likata perfect everything in the new spirit of infinity in the mighty name of Jesus. Likata lama roko tobo mo liti. Oh, thank you, Lord. We worship you. in the mighty name of Jesus which you have longed to 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 have or have a soul to be able to to um to 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 clearly hear God oh Karama Sukoto so he's opening both physical Kelama Roko Torubo so just put your hand on it oh Lord Jesus a Kalama Roko to I'm seeing this part thank you Lord in the mighty name of Jesus that you remove the infection you remove the infection that has blocked the ears in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, so to flush your blood in it in the name of Jesus. And I'm also hearing somebody with the baby. You don't know what the baby has eaten, but he keeps, you know, his stomach keeps running. His stomach keeps running. I'm hearing just give the baby, um, that's what I'm hearing. 
a cup of water, you put a little bit of salt in it, you pour over it, and as you give it to the baby to drink, you will see that the baby will be healed, he would have stopped in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm seeing that baby. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's very it could be worrying when you children are sick because you you feel for them. They are so and they are the apples of the eyes of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's good. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.